Hello, I'm Logan Phillips and welcome to my vlog, or as we like to call it, The Vlogan. This is a vlog dedicated to people with special needs and those who love them. Today we have uh, the pleasure of talking with Lauren Holly, the Executive Director of the Brain Injury Association of Ohio. Welcome, Lauren. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so uh, I'm very interested to know about the Brain Injury Association of Ohio and how it helps people with um, disabilities and brain injuries. So we've been around since 1982 um, and we serve the whole state of Ohio with the mission of providing resources for brain injury prevention, research, education, and advocacy. So we really want to be that resource for individuals to either prevent a brain injury through education programs um, and legislation, or you know, to be that person to help walk alongside them after they've sustained a brain injury by connecting them to resources um, and helping to provide support. Oh, great. So it's interesting in, in preparing for our talk today, I got on your website and I saw that the statistic is that one in four adults will suffer some sort of brain injury in their lifetime. That was um, a new statistic to me. Can you talk just a little bit more about that? Sure, absolutely. So we really call brain injury the silent epidemic. Um, it is a huge it just a huge public health concern with the number of individuals that are affected because the brain injury can really be anything um, from a concussion where you're, you know, you're knocked out at a sporting event, perhaps, um, to a very serious brain injury after a motor vehicle accident where you've lost oxygen and consciousness for a, a long period of time and you suffer um, much more damage. So the, the range of what a brain injury can mean is huge um, and every brain injury is different. So, you know, just when you've seen one individual who sustained a, a brain injury, you've really just seen one individual that sustained a brain injury. Everybody's outcomes are different. Um, it doesn't matter what your age is, your gender is, your race, your socioeconomic level, um, we are all at risk of a brain injury. Lauren, can you tell um, the listeners and me um, about sort of the boots on the ground support that you offer as an association to people who've suffered a brain injury? Sure, absolutely. So one of our biggest services that we offer is our helpline. So that's a free service where folks can call in. They can uh, contact us via our website. We have a helpline form there. They can email us at help at biaoh.org. And that service really is to connect folks to the resources that they need um, during their journey after they've had a brain injury. So whether it's um, finding a specialist TBI physician, whether it is finding maybe some therapies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, maybe you need um, assistance applying for disability. Those are the types of questions that we field. Um, and you can contact us and we will help connect you to resources as well as just provide general support and help you walk through that journey. Um, we also offer support groups. So we have support groups throughout the state, um, some that meet in person, some that are virtual, all different types of support groups. So we have support groups for caregivers, support groups for survivors, support groups for spouses, support groups for young adults. Um, so we're really trying to make sure that folks get um, the resources and support that they need to, to manage after having sustained a brain injury. We also offer um, education programs. So that would include um, our annual TBI summit. And that is an opportunity for us to bring together nationally renowned speakers to come and talk about what's new in the brain injury space, as well as new ways of maybe approaching treatment, research, um, and programs as well. So it sounds like that if, if you're a person who has suffered a brain injury or you have a loved one, that this might be sort of one of the first places that you would go to find a, you know, to find maybe a mentor that says, hey, what do I need to do? What do I need to know? What questions am I not asking that I should be asking? We like to um, see ourselves as kind of that first point of contact that can help reach out and connect you to any resources that you need, um, as well as oftentimes connect you with peer support. So we are oftentimes connecting individuals who have had a brain injury with other individuals who have had a brain injury so that they can help directly mentor each other and share you know, what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them, or connecting caregivers with another caregiver so that they can truly um, you know, see what the real life journey is gonna look like. Now, are there other states with brain injury associations? Is this a chapter or is this an organization sort of on its own? 
So we are an affiliate of the Brain Injury Association of America. So we are part of a a larger organization. There are brain injury associations in multiple states throughout the country. And we do work together on a national level um, to help with public policy and as well as resources. So there is an even greater resource behind us as well. Now, do you do you all fund research um, or or do you advocate for research through policy or do you advocate for services through policy? Sure. So we don't directly fund research, but we do advocate for both services as well as research in policy. And so we do have an active relationship with our legislators across Ohio, as well as at the federal level where we we'll go in and talk about what the needs of the brain injury community are, whether it is in relation to insurance reform or reform in terms of the rehab services, rules and regulations. Those are the types of things that we will go in and have conversations with them about. Got it. Now, um, is it my understanding that that many, um, many adults are gonna be after the age of 22 when, uh, when their injury occurs? Um, do you help link them with um, in the central Ohio area on aging? Is that a common link that you make um, for support? Sure. For those that call us from central Ohio, absolutely. We often um, are reaching out to them. We work with all the area agencies across the state because, again, we, you know, we serve all, all counties of Ohio, um, but we are linking folks, whether it's, you know, someone that has sustained the injury before 22 and we help link them to that developmental disabilities um, system, or if it's over the age of 22, we will link them to the services that they need to also get services. Do you help people with um, applying for social security, disability, or anything like that, um, offer supports with that? We offer support and we will refer them to um, professionals such as yourself (laughs) that would be able to help them apply. So tell us, if if you don't mind, what's an executive director for an association like the Brain Injury Association and specifically the Brain Injury Association do? What's your day look like? (laughs) Well, no two days are the same. I will tell you that. That's one of the things that I love about nonprofit management is the variety. And so some days, you know, it's meeting with the the folks at OSU about um, new programs and services that they're looking to bring out. Um, Some days it's working on our, you know, our plan for our membership drive. Some days it's, you know, taking helpline calls and talking directly with caregivers and survivors. So no two days are alike, um, but always, you know, the rooted in the mission of making sure that we are providing quality services to those that have sustained a brain injury. Got it. So it sounds like you're doing, sometimes you're working with the legislatures in Ohio and other days you've got your tennis shoes on because you've got, you're, you're doing uh, the work that, uh, that needs to get done around the office and, and helping those individuals who call in. Absolutely. Absolutely. How did you become involved in nonprofit uh, leadership? I, I saw that you worked for, was it Easter Seals before? I had best laid plans, but I was directed otherwise. And I ended up in the, the nonprofit social services world many years ago. And I just, I really fell in love with advocating for seniors and those that have had disabilities. What I love about it is exactly what we just talked about, the variety um, of work and things that you get to do in nonprofit management. You know, we're typically everybody wears many hats, so you get to do different things. Um, And it's very mission oriented. So what led me to the Brain Injury Association of Ohio is actually not only my passion for all of those things, nonprofit leadership, but also I have a family member that's actually sustained two traumatic brain injuries. So it's very near and dear to my heart that um, when we're carrying out this work, it's I'm very passionate about it because I've had personal experience. Wow. And and that certainly does does make a difference. Now, um, can you talk about the funding? Where does where does uh, the, the Brain Injury Association of Ohio get its funding? And is there something that the folks out here could do to help? So we do receive funding through some state allocations and grants, um, but a big portion of you know, where we need to get our funds is through fundraising. Um, So folks can absolutely help us out, um, not only through making donations, but also through volunteering. We can always use assistance with helping with some of our projects for our programs and services. Um, And you can also help with advocacy efforts. So helping us meet with legislators across the state. Um, And one of the best ways that folks can help is to actually become a member of the association. So we are a member-based organization. And for a nominal fee, you can join and have access to 
all of our resources and education programs um, and help support the mission as well. And, and it sounds like maybe the, the membership uh, is going to consist of those individuals who suffered a brain injury, but also those people who care for them and love them and are supportive of them. Is that right? Absolutely. So we have members that are survivors, we have members that are caregivers, and then we have general community members that are just interested in the cause of brain injury, and they will join as a member as well. Um, we also offer professional memberships for um, clinicians and professionals as well. So we have a wide range of folks that will join the organization. Okay. And so for folks who aren't really, um, who, who don't know a whole lot about nonprofits, you got, you have a board, correct, that, that, that hired you and that you report to. How does, how does that interaction work between an executive director and, and the board? I know that when I looked up the board, um, there's lots of people with really lots of sophisticated letters after their names, uh, PhDs and um, MSWs and all kinds of things. Can you talk a little bit about your interaction with the board and, and how, how, the, how the organization actually works? The executive director and the board are really two co-pilots that help drive the organization forward. And we work together very closely to make sure that we are staying on point with our mission um, and doing all of the things in the community that we need to do to build awareness and engagement. Um, and we, as you mentioned, we are very blessed with our board. We have a, a huge amount of experience and talent within our board, um, but also a very dedicated group of folks. I've, I've really never seen a board quite as engaged and involved um, as our board is, and we're, we're truly blessed for that. Great. So, so it's kind of the, the board sort of along with you formulate policy and mission, and then your job is to make that mission come into fruition and their the board's job is to support you in that is that kind of how it works absolutely great yeah the board is a very impressive group that uh that i saw yes yes they're phenomenal i've enjoyed my association with the brain injury um association of ohio um i've presented at a number of events and um the folks that you work with are so uh, so appreciative and um it feels really good to be able to help people um and know that what you're doing um, is really impacting people right here and now and helping them live a better life. So as a member of the disability community, thank you for your work. We, we look forward to uh, continuing to learn more about the Brain Injury Association. Lauren, it's been just a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for, for joining us here today on Logan. Thank you for having me. We're so, we're so appreciative of the opportunity to partner with you as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Vlogan. Please like, share, and subscribe to the RRPG channel so you can stay up to date with some of the latest news in the disability community.